Hello, this is Robert Gephardt, and today I wanted to talk to you about five ways that you can save money as a freelancer. Now, if you work as a freelancer, then you have a very different lifestyle from people who work in an office, right? I mean, you are your own boss. You don't have someone breathing down your neck making sure you do the right thing. You also don't have to deal with all the bureaucracy. You don't have to uh, rely on someone else for uh, your job and this and that. But you also have some insecurities, right? Because you uh, aren't guaranteed that monthly paycheck. You have to wear many different hats. You have to do everything. You're in charge of marketing, in charge of sales, in charge of supplies, in charge of um, you know, getting invoices, and in charge of doing the actual work. So anyway, it's a give or take. You can set your own hours, you can set your own where you wanna work, but you also don't have, yeah, the security, the safety of that paycheck every month, and uh, you know you don't have the coworkers to talk to at the water cooler, et cetera, et cetera. So this means, this basically means that you lead a very different lifestyle from your average Joe who goes to the nine to five, right? And it also means that a lot of the things you see in terms of how to save money and uh, how to earn more and stuff like that don't really apply to you. And a lot of things that could apply to you just never get said because there's no real market for it, you know, because a majority of people are still working for that nine to five for that job. So I just wanted to target people like us, freelancers, more specifically freelance translators, because that's what I am. But I think freelancers in general, and I want to target, target us, people like us, and talk about ways we can save money. These are ways that I've come across, and so anyway, I've got five ways here in which we as freelancers can save money. Way number one is something that I'm gonna call time arbitrage. Uh, time arbitrage basically means that since you aren't working from nine to five in an office, since you're not stuck in one place during these hours, it means that you can use these hours as you wish. So you could decide to work earlier in the morning or later at night, and you could make certain hours during the day available. This could be for grocery shopping, if you wanna go grocery shopping when no one's there, i.e. any time during the week and not evenings or weekends, or uh, just for any other shopping you want to do. When you have fewer people and it's a lot quicker and you can get it done, and very often it's a lot cheaper. Um, because time arbitrage also means date arbitrage, i.e. there are certain times of the day when things are better. And this applies also, you know, if you want to watch a movie, you can watch a matinee rather than having to watch it in the evening. You can also get lunch specials or the, the what are they called? Uh, they have uh, happy hours, you know, that start many times at 4, 4.30. You can take advantage of all of those. But it also means that you can choose different days to do things like shopping during the week. Um, and you'll find that very often during the week, think there's more on stock than on weekends because on weekends you never know if something's going to be sold out if a lot of people are there. There are also a lot of discounts very often during the week because people want to attract more people. They know on weekends they'll get plenty of customers, but especially with big ticket items, if you're buying a car or buying a uh, TV or something like that, they really try to attract people during the week. They also might have stuff left over from the weekend. So you can many times find things that are discounted that way. And this is also when they restock. So anyway, during the week just makes it easier because there are fewer people, you can be quicker, you have the whole place to yourself and very often it's cheaper. So that's what I mean by time arbitrage. By the way, this can also mean that what you can do is you can set up your weekend to be a different day. If I set up my quote unquote weekend to be on say Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday or something, then that means that I, well, first of all, I can travel during those days, so I can decide to uh, go someplace. Uh, just as an example, uh, my, uh, my wife and I decided to travel recently to, um, to Asheville, and uh, we were able to uh, get a rental car very cheap. We were able to get the hotel for free because I had some points, but we were only able to get that rate during the week. And, we're, and since we just moved to Charlotte, we went up to this place called Asheville up in the mountains. We saw the Blue Ridge Mountains, Great Smoky Mountain National Park. It was great. It was awesome. And it was really cheap because we went during the off time. And so if you're a freelancer, you're able to do that. Do any traveling. Go during the week when no one's there. There are fewer crowds and it costs a whole lot less. By the way, if you decide to do this, it means that you take your weekend during the week, but it also means you're available to work over the weekend. So if you have a client that comes to you on Friday and says they need something by Monday morning, you can be like, yeah, I can do that. It might have to cost, you, you might be able to charge a bit more also because if they need something by Monday morning on a Friday, they're pretty desperate. 
So this will obviously depend on a case by case basis, but still it's a pretty good deal to have if you could swing it that way. The way I do it now is I'm kind of flexible. I don't have a set two days that are my weekend, but I uh, leave it open for whenever is best and whenever works out best. Now my wife did get a job at a company, so we'll probably be able to do that less, but we'll take it as they come, right? Anyway, the first point, that's it. Time arbitrage, which is also date arbitrage, day arbitrage, stuff like that. Take advantage of the fact that you don't have that set schedule and you can do things at times and days that you see most fit. Second point is country arbitrage. I'm not very good at naming these, but this is how I see them in my head. Country arbitrage is something along the same lines. If you're a translator, you translate from one language to the other, which probably means you deal with two different countries, right? You Like for me, I, I deal with Italian and English, and so I have clients in the States and the UK, but also in, uh, in Italy and Switzerland, actually, the Italian part of Switzerland. So what does this mean? This means, we'll say, you know, you, I'm here in the US now, so I need to spend time with my family on July 4th, right? And, you know, so we take July 4th and I, and, and I spend time with friends or family or whatever it might be. But at the same time, I know that my clients in Italy have, in Italy, they have a big, um, their big, they don't celebrate July 4th, but their big holiday is, is uh, Ferragosto. This is August 15th. And I know it's a huge holiday there. So if someone needs a translation done during that time, Again, they're very desperate. So first of all, I'll be one of the few people who's available because everyone in Italy is off to the beach during that time. In fact, most of the people in Italy are off to the beach the whole month of August. But it also means that I'm available and sometimes I can even charge more once again because I know that the supply is so low that if people need a translation, they really need it during that time. So you can try to play around there. And if you, in fact, if you do have clients who are in Europe most of Europe is shut down during August, especially Southern Europe. So you can use this to your advantage, even if you don't have clients right now, but you deal with one of the languages of Southern Europe, try contacting clients or going up on the boards and the forums and the message boards and whatnot and seeing who needs a translation and making yourself available. And what I do also is I let all my clients know that I am available during these holidays, just so they know ahead of time, if something comes up, they can always contact me and I'll be the first person that comes to mind if something comes up. So once again, that's country arbitrage and take advantage of the fact that you have different holidays and different, these can be national holidays, bank holidays, saints days, and, uh, or just general, you know, if you know that a certain country is having a huge event, like a soccer event or some race car event. And so, you know, the whole city or whole country or whatever, the whole region is shut down. You can make yourself available, say, oh, I'm available by the way. So, you know, I can still work on something if you want it. So anyway, that's point number two. Point number three, as freelancers, and after a while you'll see when you're first starting out by yourself, you really want to save money, and so a lot of us become coupon cutters, right? And we keep track of sales and coupons and everything when we go shopping. And a big thing there is I wanna let you know when you do go shopping and you find something that's say 20, 25% off, even 50% off, I can get you a better deal. In fact, I can get you 100% off. You know how I do that? Don't buy the item. If you go into a place to buy something and you see 25% off, you really have to ask yourself, would I buy this at all, you know, if it weren't discounted? Because if you're only buying it because it's 25% off, then you're still spending 75% of that money that you wouldn't be spending otherwise, right? So you really have to keep this in mind. And, and this is a bit difficult to think in this way. So what I do now when I go shopping is I have a list ahead of time, grocery shopping or whatever else it might be. And if something isn't on that list, I don't care how much it's discounted, I don't buy it. Um, now over time, there have been some exceptions for things that don't go bad. So, you know, I might not have toothbrushes, but maybe I know within the next couple months we'll need a new toothbrush and all the toothbrushes that we use are on discount, then yeah, something like that can work out. But you really need to go through this in your mind. If a certain tub of ice cream, even one that you like a lot is on discount, but you don't usually buy it, you probably should not buy it because you're just spending money that you wouldn't otherwise be spending. So just remember, every time you see 25% discount, 35% discount, 75% discount, remember that you could have 100% discount. And so if it's not something you wanted originally, you probably shouldn't buy it. Point number four. Uh, point number four is uh, something, once again, when you're dealing, when you're a freelancer, especially when you're first starting out, this is for you guys first starting out, chances are you're not earning very much. And so it sucks not being able to earn much. But having a low level of income 
also has its perks, right? Um, well, first of all, you pay less in income tax, but I mean, that's not much of an incentive. I mean, it, either way, it's not an incentive. You should want to earn more, but take advantage of the fact while you earn less that there's certain things that can apply. And more specifically, I'm thinking of something called sliding fee scales. Sliding fee scales are something that apply, to, I mean, to many things. These can be doctors and lawyers and dentists and stuff like that. Basically, the less you earn, the less you have to pay. And you can ask and anyone you deal with like that, if they have something like that, if they have sliding fee scales. And this came to mind because recently um, the YMCA down from for our road, they have a sliding fee scale. You know, we could have used that a couple of years back, but basically if you earn less money, you pay them less for your monthly uh, membership. Also, when I was in Switzerland, they had a deal where, I mean, they had a deal. When I was in Switzerland, if you got a ticket, like a speeding ticket, it was adjusted based on your income. Obviously, I'm not saying that you should try to get speeding tickets while you're earning less money, but you should keep track of these things and actually maybe even ask for places where you make your purchases and uh, especially semi-official places like lawyers, doctors, but government agencies and government payments, stuff like that. See if they have something called a sliding fee scale or whatever equivalent they might have in your country. And as someone who's low, earning lower income, maybe you can pay less for that. And so you can take advantage of that. And that's something you definitely want to keep in mind um, as a freelancer because, once again, you're probably earning less money. And also, depending on how taxes work, you're also maybe tax less. This obviously depends from every tax structure, you know, from every country and everything. So don't quote me on this, but you might want to look into it anyway and see if you can find these deals, tax advantages and these sliding fee scales for you. And that's number four. Number five, last but not least, and actually there's a bonus after number five, which anyway, I'll get to it. Number five is as a freelancer, when you are earning money and you want to save money, think ahead of what you want to save money on, right? Now this can be purchases, um, you know, grocery shopping, or it can be, you know, buying money in stock, or it can be maybe for baby clothes or, you know, for your family. For me, it was travel. When I first started, when I first started, I decided, okay, I want to concentrate on travel. I'm interested in travel and that's what I want to do. So the advantage that you have as a freelancer, which doesn't seem like an advantage of first at first is that you have to buy everything yourself. You know, I have to buy my own laptop. I have to buy these headphones. I have to buy the desk that I work off of. I have to buy all my supplies. I have to buy, you know, a photocopy machine and this, that, and the other. You're going to have to buy everything yourself, which means you have a lot of expenses. You know, you can't go to the office and say, we're out of paper, someone get paper. No, you have to buy the paper yourself. But a good thing about that is that you can use the same credit card for all of these. So since I decided I want to travel, I did some research on the best credit card for travel and basically for the hotels that I use. Now I've mentioned this before, I think in my travel video where I traveled from Italy over here to the States and I, and I think I got a hotel and the flight for free and because of points. And so what I, do, what I did and what I do still now is anytime I have expenses that are work related, which is a lot of them, I put them on one card, which first of all makes it a lot easier during tax season because everything's on the same card. But second of all, it also means that I can get a whole lot of points and all of these points and you know, and I decide I want to save money on travel. So every time I buy something for work and you know, this includes also everything online and you know, anything I can do, like even taxes and stuff like that, if I can do it, if it's work related I try to put on that card and that gives me a lot of points, which then I can use for these hotels, which means I can stay in hotels for free. I mean, very often, usually whenever we're traveling, we're staying in hotels for free. And um, so it can be a great deal but you have to decide ahead of time what it is you want to spend money on. You know, a lot of cars have cash back. A lot of cars have this benefit or that benefit. Do some research ahead of time, figure out what it is, and then use a card. Obviously, along with using a card, it doesn't mean that you just stack up debt and then you end up paying interest because you're not going to save any money if you're paying a bunch of interest on a card. On a card, you want to pay it off every month, but you still get those points and those points are what can help you a lot along the way. If you decide ahead of time what you want to save money on, then they can be very helpful. At least they have for me. Uh, so that's point number five. Point, and now I have a bonus point, which actually just came to my mind because I, I uh, because of my earlier point, point number two, I think, which was country arbitrage. Because when I was looking over my notes, I saw country arbitrage actually is something else I do. 
Once again, if you're a freelancer, chances are you deal with two different countries. If you're a freelancer and, uh, you know, maybe you, maybe, you know, if you do Spanish to German translations, right? It might mean that you live in Germany, but you're originally from Spain. Your family's from Spain. So what does this mean? This means that maybe once a year, once every six months, something, you go back to Spain. So what I mean here by, I need a new name because country arbitrage was the other point. Let's call it location arbitrage. Maybe we need better names in general, but anyway, let's call it location arbitrage for now. Um, this means that when you, if you live in Germany, but you go back to Spain every now and then, then you should take advantage of the stuff that's cheaper in Spain. Now this can mean groceries or going out to eat or whatever, but I mean even other stuff, maybe medical expenses and stuff like that. This came to my mind because I do, actually, I don't deal with Chinese translations usually, but, um, well, now I am a bit just because of, uh, the agency that I'm setting up, but unrelated to that, my wife is Taiwanese. So we go back to Taiwan at least once a year. And when I do, that's when I schedule all my dentist appointments, my medical checkups, et cetera, et cetera, because they have really good doctors and dentists there, but they're a fraction of the price of here in, in well, in the States it's a mess, but also of Switzerland, you know, and Switzerland is pretty expensive too. And um, so you should take advantage of stuff like this. And in fact, I was watching, there's this other guy in this other video that's saying he lives in something like Arizona or something, and he goes down to Mexico for his dentist appointments, you know, because it's, it's not that far and it's a fraction of the price. If you can figure out a way to use the two countries you deal with, then it can be to your benefit. Now, maybe you don't regularly go to another country. Maybe you are a Swedish to French translator, but just because you studied in France, but you live in Sweden, you're originally from Sweden, you don't go very often to France. But even if you just studied in France and you, know, you speak it well enough to be a translator, then you probably have friends in France. And maybe there's stuff that you can purchase more cheaply in France or in the US or in Asia or wherever it might be. I mean, this comes to mind because when I lived here in the U.S. years ago and my family was back in Europe, you know, they were always ordering stuff on Amazon, having it sent to me, and I would ship it over to them because it was cheaper, even with the shipping, to just order here in the States and, um, and have it sent to me. And then I'd, you know, I'd ship it over. They'd pay me back for the shipping, but it was still way cheaper for them. So this location arbitrage can be very good. Uh, and so do some research, find out what is cheaper, especially once again, big ticket items. You know, if you're looking to buy a car, TV, um, once again, doctor's appointments, stuff like that, look into this and see if it might be worth your time and effort to, uh, you know, to wait off and do those purchases when you go back to whatever other country you deal with or deal with your contacts in this other country and check with them. So there you have it. That, those were five plus one, so six uh, ways to save money as a freelance, more specifically as a freelance translator. I hope you found that useful. If you did, uh, feel free to uh, leave me a thumbs up. If you have other ways that you think a freelancer or a freelance translator can save money, definitely let me know. I'm always interested in hearing about them. And uh, you can let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, feel free to subscribe and you'll get more videos like this directly to your inbox. We deal with uh, freelance, freelance translation more specifically and tips and tricks, tidbits, stuff like that. So I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.